Hello, welcome back. We've got uh, Colleen Shafroff with uh, Maryhill Museum, and we were going to talk a little bit about the grounds because the grounds are extremely significant there. And uh, I want to know too about the peacocks. What's the story with the peacocks? Oh, well, the story with the peacocks. The peacocks had been there since the 70s. There was a, a, an exchange between a local family and the director at the time who was very romantic and thought that the grounds needed to have these fantastic birds on them. And uh, so the exchange was made uh, and uh, the birds were there and they've been there ever since. Okay. And uh, we have quite a few on the grounds right now and they display for visitors especially this time of year because of course the males are kind of interested in the females and they're doing a little Happens. more of that uh, feathery um, jittery stuff yeah. and so they're really looking quite beautiful which interesting enough unlike in real life or in the human life the males are beautiful and the females are not so. The females are a bit drab yeah. because what they want to do is they want to lay their clutch of eggs and disappear Okay. They don't. They don't want anybody to know where their eggs or and later their chicks happen to be residing. So, they're really when the leg, they're very hard to see when they're le they're sitting on their eggs, and they're even more hard to see initially when the chicks hatch. Mm. But then later in the summer, sometime around August, you begin to see the broods following their moms around the grounds. Yeah. And do you guys actually, or do this, do the groundskeepers have like little nests or something for them? To oh, they, and what do you do with them in the winter? Well, they do. Their, they have their own nests. They prefer it that way. They uh -huh. roost in the trees mostly at night, but their nests are under bushes and, you know. I've never actually seen a nest myself, so I can't really say yeah. that. You'll probably have to get Andy on the show uh, ah. to tell you how or where they nest, but they do do that. They roost in the trees at night, and then in the winter, they carry out their lives as normal. And they actually, you said, roost in the trees? Uh-huh. So they can fly? Yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> They can make a really good attempt at they flying? They can make a really good okay. attempt at flying. They're, they're really not a flying bird, but uh -huh. they do, they can go, they can go from the ground to the top of the ramp, for example, or from the ground to the treetops. Okay. And they can float and glide down, but they don't really fly. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the, the you know, the lushness of the gardens there and, and the significance. Uh, were those put in by when Sam Hill was, when that was going to be his country home, or was that all kind of a progression after a progression afterwards I the, initially when Sam Hill um, was going to have he had a, he had the front lawn in um, cabbages cabbages and further out more toward the highway were orchards and he eventually wanted to have vineyards there um, as the museum opened in the early years that moved that transition from being an active farm into more of a beautiful place for people to enjoy so so a visual garden mm. trees were planted um, and we have quite a variety of trees on the grounds um, Russian olives elms oaks um, you, you name it practically we have it somewhere on the grounds so the trees were planted and then uh, more formal garden designs came along and there have been various um, styles done out there over the years but now it's it's sort of like visiting a country English garden and home and the grounds are out there for you to wander around and to look at and the flowers in the gardens are rich and varied and they they range from irises to shrubs to roses um, to lilies. Mm -hmm. Volunteer recently planted a great many lilies around the grounds t um, in memory of Queen Marie. Really? She loved lilies. Okay. <laughs> so we have, um, we have these wonderful gardens and there's native plants also. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, what's really interesting is this museum just went through this process of looking at the grounds and now we have a master plan so I think over the next 10 years you're going to be seeing some more changes happen. Uh, to the grounds and recent improvements, especially in the parking lot uh -huh. area and the um, building of the Windy Flats walkway and viewpoint, which is along the south rim of the parking lot, mm. uh, is really enhancing all of those spaces. There's some sculptures and stuff, I think. We have our outdoor there. sculpture garden there, too. Uh, yeah. There are pieces in our own collection out there, as well as new pieces every year. Mm -hmm. And it is just a fantastic place to come and enjoy the flowers, the gardens, and the sculpture. Of course. And for people that maybe haven't been or haven't been in a while, um, you guys have a big event coming up. And it's Founders Day, an annual event, uh -huh. and you guys have a ton of things to uh, 
to offer people to come out and do and see, and it, it runs for quite a while. But let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about what, what you guys have in store. Oh, for Founders Day, we have, um, we have, first of all, the gardens and grounds are completely open uh, to the public. And inside the museum, we have these wonderful speakers coming, um, and they are going to be talking about the, the uh, Washington Secretary of State, Sam Reed's coming, and he's going to be talking about the importance of museum and Mary Hill to the state. Bonnie Beeks from the local Klickitat County Historical Society is going to be talking about the importance of Mary Hill to the county. We have Pat Courtney Gold, a native um, American basket weaver and artist who's going to come and talk about um, the importance of the collection to the native people and to her art. Um, we have Liz Hunter who's coming all the way from Boston. Boston yes. to talk about the importance Mary Hill has played in um, the American realism art scene and how it has supported those artists over the years. Um, we have a man uh, coming to talk about the Romanian community and how important Mary Hill is to the National Romanian Society and its community. Which is really interesting because I bet you most people totally don't even make that correlation. You know that they're because of the Queen doing the doing the inauguration or the dedication rather. Um, yeah, there would be a strong tie. So that's oh, gonna, yeah. so that he's going to come over and, and talk about the significance that the, the museums had on on uh, on their culture and oh, society. Yes. So mm -hmm. very exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, don't go anywhere because this episode is a little bit longer, and we've actually got Colleen for another thirty minutes, and so we're going to continue this discussion right after the break. Don't go anywhere.